Well, kind of a late start. Let's see what we got here. There we are. Okay. I'm uh I'm done downloading the first twenty seven gig of our database. And uh is the audio okay? I hope. Turn this over this way. I'm still spinning plates. Very clear. Good. All right. Let's see, we're on this one? Yeah. Okay. To the point, I don't know where I'm at half the time. But what I'm going to do tonight, I'm basically done taking the flaps on and off, on and off. I'm going to go ahead and epoxy these uh, flaps on and uh, do the elevators as well. I didn't get on late because we were still downloading, or I didn't get on early because we were still downloading uh, files for the backup. I want to look at this here and I'll make sure that my flaps are even. So that one's got to go up like so. Okay. This one here. Okay, I'm going to give you a little rundown on how to get these in right. This one here is tight. This this flap here is non-adjustable. It's uh, the clip itself is tight up against the uh, horn. So this is the one you want to put on first. So we're going to glue this one on first. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy. I'm going to clear out some space to work here. almost ridiculous. This process doesn't take very long to do. I got a sheet of paper here. Mix the epoxy on. be looking for a message on stun hanger on, on this server move we're gonna have to do some fancy footwork to get it moved over that's five minutes that's five minutes that's 30 I want that that's five minutes okay Holy moly, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to mix it. I'm going to use five minute epoxy to do this. So I'm going to mix up a liberal amount. Liberal. <laughs> okay. Uh, shoot. There it is. I use a ball driver to do this.
and uh, get the epoxy on the ball driver, and I'm going to put it down into where the uh, flap horn goes. Push it down in there. Get my paper towel handy. Got to kind of be quick because I only got this is five minute epoxy, so I can't can't jerk around. And I just put the epoxy on the stick here, the uh, the hinge. I probably could put it down in the hole a little easier. It had a place to work instead of all this trash. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm not uh, real talkative. I got to be on the hump here. I got to get her done. So we'll get some quite a bit of epoxy in the hole there to get this hinge on. Okay, so now I'm going to put, I put the glue in the hole, and I'm going to put some glue on the hinge itself. You kind of want to set, I mean, getting these glued on good is kind of important. Certainly don't want them flying off. Okay, we got we got glue on everything, so now we just stick them in there. Come on, get in there. There it is. All the way up against the, the hinge line. Now I get a paper towel with some alcohol on it and wipe the bottom because you know darn well some epoxy slathered underneath. Of course it did. Now, an important part of doing this, this is part of bench trimming. Making sure this is lined up. I like to use five minutes so I can hold things together. Looks like I got uh, a little bit of epoxy on the hinge line there. I want to get that out of there. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I got to be careful.
We're going to hold it up tight. They're going to be stiff till you pick them. And then we'll move to the other side. So we'll let that dry for a minute. You know, I had some dry slide. Where the heck did it go? I thought it was up there on the, the top. I hate not being in my own shop at home. Like I said, I'm so sorry that I didn't get on earlier. This this server move is driving me nuts, man. Yep, there's no need for a gap. They they seal there right up tight inside. There's a cup. They go up inside there. They're a little stiff at first, but once you get that epoxy picked out, you know, because uh, no matter how nice and neat you try to do it, epoxy always escapes past the hinge and go goes up against the trailing edge, trailing edge of the wing and the leading edge of the flap. There's always just a little bit in there, so you got to pick it out with an X-Acto knife. See, just a little little bit of booger on there. Once you get them boogers picked out,
I think I'm going to get with a couple of guys on the forum that seem to know a little more about coding than I do for this server move. I mean, I got an idea. I got an idea how to how to get around this nonsense, and uh, what that's going to involve is a new login uh, IP. So instead of going to stun hanger with an E, you'll have to go to stun hanger with an A. But I'm going to have to reload the entire forum once again because they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Imagine that. No speaking English. But I'll get it worked out. I got three months to get it done. And we got it backed up, so... 27 gig of it anyway. There's a little bit more to go. 11 and 6. There we go. We're all good there now. So which one of these three services left would you do next? That's what I want to know. Let's see how sharp you guys are. And why. I did the I did the non movable flap first that there's no slop on it. So the next the next movable service we're gonna do is that flap. And that's a little more in, involved than this one. Because we have to make sure that it's parallel to this flap. I have to hold it. Let's put it this way. If you if you build your wings straight and you do your flaps exactly like I do, it won't be flying like this or like that. It'll fly right straight out on the end of the lines. Or at least you hope. Okay, let's work on the other side. Everything stayed pretty straight now, so. Wing straight, flap straight. If I painted equal sides, everything should stay straight. There's another thing that you guys got to understand when you're painting an airplane make sure you paint both sides equal amount of coats because if you don't the wing will warp Let's see here I could have swore there was a red maybe it was black with red I can't remember but another airplane's coming to a finish
get another one done here. Throw this out. You know what? I can mix this on a TV box. TV dinner box. That'd be better than that stupid piece of paper. artist palette now for a plastic. Okay, the next one, next one down. Okay, I'm going to have to get the hump on here again, so if I don't say a whole lot, it's because i got to move. So the first thing you want to do is you want to load this, uh, load this up here with the uh, epoxy, the... Uh, The eighth inch where the horn goes. That'll hold it straight. Get it wiped off. A little bit of glue on these hinges. Come on. By all means, try to keep your hands clean of this epoxy. This, if it gets on your, I mean, it's a pain in the ass if it gets on the paint. Okay, so we got that. It's, uh, Brian, let's put some epoxy down in the holes. And this is the this step here that I'm going to do next is is probably the most important part of building an airplane that flies straight. getting these on square. Okay. A little alcohol on this rag. Damn! Well, I gotta move. I can't be jerking around with that. Oh. 
Okay, so now from behind, I sight down these flaps and make sure they're on straight. And straight on the wing. And you can tweak them, but I don't like tweaking them. I don't like tweaking flaps. That's too hard on the wood. Nope. You can't see what I'm doing. So now we're going to be a human clamp. Just stand there and hold them till they dry. Okay. And it, it doesn't take long. It's five minute epoxy for Christ's sake, so ain't no big deal. The biggest thing is keep making sure you keep this shit clean so you don't have any epoxy on the finish. Oop. Almost screwed that up. Got into that ink line. No big deal, we'll fix it. Okay, that's pretty close there. Pretty close. We'll let that set up a little bit. And then we're going to work on these. Now, I don't use any incidents in my stab or motor alignment or whatever. A lot of guys, these aerospace engineers like Brett Buck and Paul Walker and all that, they want to set incidents into the stab. Well, the way you set the way that I set incident in this, you just group the group the elevators. <laughs> so you got so the airplane will track straight because this is a symmetrical airfoil, so it all always has to be at an angle of attack creating lift. So you can't fly at zero or else it'll hunt. It'll be looking for a groove. So if you droop the elevators a little bit, I don't know whether it's pitching it up or down, I don't know, but it'll lay in the groove. And when I say a little bit, I mean like one degree or two degrees, just slightly down. I try to zero these and get these at the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of this thing here, whatever you call it, the fillet, flat or elevator fillet. And these are loose on here, see? So I'll do these one at a time. They're, they're both equally sloppy so that I can adjust them. And looking at them from behind, make sure they're parallel once I find the position that I want them in. But I got to wait for that 
flap to dry and get it picked out so I can So I see some boogie there. And I'll pick it from the bottom too, but I'm not real worried about getting it picked out right now. Tight in a couple of small spots, like right here. You do have to kind of watch these hinges because they are wood. You can glue the flap to the hinge, but normally it's not a big deal. You know, like those cleat or plate hinges, they're nylon, so epoxy won't stick to them, but epoxy will stick stick to these things really good. So, Wait a minute here for this to I'll wait for the setup for just a minute. I, I know you guys can wait a minute. I don't have to be doing something every second. You've been on 33 minutes, so nine o'clock. I'll have it done by 9:30. So we got uh, flaps on the they look pretty good. I guess they both need picked up here. Maybe I'll bend this up a little bit. I don't know. Let's see here. Yep, they both need to be picked up. Careful attention needs to be paid. You got to pay attention when you're doing these because sticky controls will kill your airplane. So let's mix up. Some epoxy and glue this one on the outboard side on first. Got to go all the way up against the stop. All the way up against the stop. So I, I guess I set the push rod in right. So that's a good thing.
Okay, mix up some epoxy and let it rip tater chip. I do, I, I do one at a time. I don't do them all at the same time. I suppose you could get them done all, all at the same time, but I just don't do it that way. So we need to load this up. Over here. How's it going, Marcel? Now, these are real important to get centered up in the in the groove you got any slop like I do, they got to get centered up in the groove. Epoxy sticks want to find their way onto the carpet. Said it's got to be picked up. Okay, human clamp. Can't remember. Do you control horns going a sleeve in the control surfaces? No, I just glue inside wood. I make a horn clip out of plywood. Pretty standard stuff. Pretty much centered there.
I haven't seen my buddy Little History on lately. He'll probably come on Saturday. He's a, uh, you need to check his channel out. He, he builds boats. He's got, got lasers on his boats, and I don't know what the hell he does with that stuff, but kind of cool. He's a different kind of modeler than we are, but yes, epoxy on the control horn. It's uh, epoxied inside so that this is the control horn. When it goes in the hole, it's, it's epoxied in there so it doesn't move. And should be pretty close to set up by now. Yeah. Pretty close, pretty close. What the hell happened to my drive slide? I had two bottles of it. I don't want to buy another. $30 bottle of dry slime. What I found works best for these, uh, for ball links, hinges, control horns, is stuff called dry slide. It's motorcycle, motorcycle throttle cable lubricant. It's not a lubricant, it's graphite. And it works good. And I just don't see it. I know I got it here. I got two bottles of it. If I did have, maybe it's out in the car. Dan Winship, if you're watching, you best be sanded. The boat guy, is, his channel is Little History. Here's some popping. Man, I wish you could find that dry slide. I thought it was sitting up here. Huh. I just got too much stuff here in this little little apartment. So this is the first one, and it's on real good. It ain't coming off. The second one should be dry enough to start get pulling on. I know where it is. It's up there in the, in the closet. Yeah, these are good. You don't feel any goobers underneath, so that's good. Any goobers here? No goobers there. All right, one more and we're done. Now, just as important as the flaps is getting these parallel. They got to be straight. You don't want them like that. So if you look, if you look here, you can see that this one is down. We'll just lift that up until it's uh, parallel. And then hold it. So we got the flaps parallel. These are drooped slightly. So when these are neutral, these are down. And if, if I have to move them, I can always tweak them a little bit. But you always want to tweak the flap horn or the elevator horns and not the flap horns. Those are eighth inch. These are three thirty seconds. 
they'll tweak a whole lot easier. If I remember right, these are the one, these are the horns that John made for me. They're made out of drill rods so that they're easy to tweak. Of course, these will work in too. I get to find that dry slide, it'll be a lot better. Tomorrow they'll be stiff again. I'll have to pop them loose, I'm sure. Really no easy way to do it. Except for, I mean, I don't know any of an easy way. But now I'll get, I'll get a uh, weight, an exact weight, on how much this thing's going to weigh, plus two ounces. We're going to put two ounces of clear on top of this mess, and that'll give me a flying weight. And I think it's going to be 61. I think we're at 58 and a half now. 59, 61 and a half, somewhere in there. It'll be, it'll be close. Okay, so let's do this last one. The other night, when I was on the hangout, I was asked a question about paint. How much paint do I put on? And I said, that was a stupid question. Well, I'm under a lot of pressure, and I, I, I didn't mean to say it that way. I'm going to say it again tomorrow night. So my apologies to Charles for telling him that was a stupid question, because it was kind of in a joke or whatever. Because there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers, and that was a stupid answer.
You want to make sure to get plenty of glue on these because you don't want these damn things flying off. be kind of a disaster and I have had it happen using the wrong kind of glue before never use canopy glue on hinges never always epoxy okay So now I got to be the human clamp for a minute again. I try to leave about a 30 second uh, of an inch gap between the wing fillet or the fuselage fillet and the uh, elevator or the flap. Because a lot of times you'll go out to the field and I'll see these guys, man, these controls are stiff. Well, hell, they're rubbing on the side of the fuselage. Pocky smuts. Trying to get that off. So I'll just hold it. I suppose you could make up some type of jig to hold this stuff, but it's pretty easy to stand here for five minutes and hold this. It's kind of a pain in the rear, but you know, if you want an airplane that's straight and all everything is straight, you'll do whatever it takes. And you can tweak them, but I don't recommend it. Try to get them on straight the first time. Is everybody happy that stunt hangers back? <laughs> 48 hours and it was nothing but panic. And I still got probably two weeks worth of work to do to get it going again. Because it ain't right. It's working temporarily. Okay, there. I'll let it sit there for a minute. I don't have to hold it now. Set up enough that it's straight across. It's still rubbery. Still. 
still rubbery, so it should be good enough to to hold her. I don't like that. It looks like a little bit tweak there. The best way to look at these is to sight into the stab or sight, sight into the wing. You want to just look at yeah, them well, they're straight. Well, no, you want to sight into the wing so you can see the same amount on top <clears throat> as you can the bottom, so on and so forth. This is so important. Take your time, whatever it takes. If it takes 10 minutes, great. If it takes an hour, that's just the way it is. It's just got to be right. And this is all part of bench trimming so that when you go out to the field for the first test flight, you can do a pattern. You don't have to worry about all kind of, I mean, of course, there's always going to be, you know, slight trimming. But every time I go out to the field with a new airplane, I can basically do a whole pattern. I never do a reverse wing over on the first flight because I don't know how it's going to turn. I do, you know, insides, then outsides, and then some squares to see if it's going to turn, see how my center of gravity is. But it should eat. The first flight of every brand new airplane should fly straight out there on the end of the lines, not like this or like that. And uh, if there's a if there's a warp in the wing, it's best to get it out before you take it out the first time. You know, steam it out. That's why. If you got any buddies that fly free flight, they're the best trimmers. Free flight guys make the best trimmers because they don't they don't have any control services. So they know they got great eyes and they're really good at aligning things and they can tell you, well, that's doing that. Let's tweak it here. They also know how to build light. Okay, let's see if it's on there. Yeah, it's on there. This one's been dry the longer. Yeah, it's on there. Let's see how they operate. Of course, they're going to be a little stiff until they get worn in. You hear that pop? That's epoxy breaking. They're gonna have to. I can hear it clicking out there on the outboard wing. I'll have to fix some epoxy out of that flap. Uh, hopefully, it ain't goobered up too bad. There. 
Not a problem. Pick it off. I don't want to come off. Why don't you give up? Because you're not going to win. Do not, do not try to CA these in. There it comes. Got it. I hear one over there on that side. I'll be picking for a while, I'm sure. A little bit of clicking here. Those will be all right. right here. Big boogie. And I don't worry about getting dope on these hinges because dope won't glue them. Even epoxy won't glue them solid. The way these are done because the the pivot is inside the flap or the elevator so as long as you can cut them free from the trailing edge and you didn't glue the hinge to the flap they have to be free We're going to try John's way of doing it with removable flaps on the next airplane. I like that idea. That way I can glue them in there absolutely perfect and pull that pin out and clean the flap up. Yep. Oh, 
boogie there. It's right there. Oh, what a pain in the rear. These final adjustments and final steps on an airplane are always time consuming if you want to get it right. But it's worth it. I got to find that dry slide to get the dry slide in there. You see, no matter how careful I was, I'm getting epoxy out of those that hinge gap by the uh, by the hinge because when I forced that hinge in there, the epoxy that I put on it, it was forced back out. Goober there, I might have to sand off. Try some alcohol on it. I doubt it. I guess you could try a razor blade on it. Getting it. Got a little bit on the paint. I I uh I didn't get it wiped off good enough. Kind of got to make sure that's off before. Yeah, they're freeing up now. Get a little alcohol on the rag and see. Attention to detail. Yep, got it. I have a little bit of touch up on that flap to do Saturday and then shoot the clear. I mean, we're only looking at two hours tops work left before I can fly it. Of course, then there's the many hours of sanding and rubbing <laughs> because we ain't done sanding yet. Not even close. Not even close. So it's all sanded out. Canopies sanded flat, the airplane sanded flat, the uh, 
hinges are now glued on. So come Saturday, it's just I'm not I can't uh, I can't wipe it with alcohol because it because the ink lines are not sealed. So I'm just going to tack rag it and then dust a coat of clear on it, and then I'm going to put one full quart which is actually a pint, a pint mixed into a quart of clear over the whole thing. And then it's uh, many hours of sanding and rubbing. That baby's got some compression. Well, was it worth it? This is the second one for this year. I need to get going on another one. Of course, we got a couple other projects to do. And so it's already starting to free up. It'll be fine. Any questions? The engine in this is a PA-75. Super Tiger 60, PA-75 in that one, PA-75 in this one, Super Tiger 60 in that one. So two 60s and two 75s for the airplanes that I have here. This is the one that I really want to fly because I know it's going to be windy and you need power in the wind. Put 15% nitro in it if it's hot. And this thing feels rough as a cob here. I missed a spot. Rough as a cob. You hear that? That's the spot I missed. The whole underside. No, both sides. Okay. No problem, we can zip that right out. I'm going to show you something here and you're going to freak out, but it ain't nothing to worry about. If you look at this where I'm sanding, blue is coming up. Well, what that is, is the, uh, you see the blue there? I've got Windex on this. The blue is where the tape line was because the paint is thicker there. So now you can't feel that. So when I clear over that, it'll be completely buried and you won't be able to feel it at all. You just gotta make sure to get it wiped off good. You don't wanna seal any of that blue underneath the clear. You see the blue that come off? So that's smooth on that side, but you listen to this side. Sounds like a cob. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that whole underside there. That's smooth, that's smooth. You'll probably get better light on this side to see what I'm going to do here. You hear it? Sounds like sandpaper. That's just my fingers. Little Windex on 1500.
You just sand until you hear the tone change. All good. This is how you paint without using paint, sandpaper. Otherwise, it'll never shine up. That is a bifurcated cow. First time I saw that, and the chicken part looks great too. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I did this cow because John says that I now always do my cows the same way. So I wanted something really out, out of the way, you know, totally different because this airplane is this paint scheme and this style airplane is my favorite. It's classic looking. It's a this is a classic, only modern. So, if you go back on and look at some of them, uh, my older videos, you know, that I did, I showed how I did this. I just, you know, I just carved it in there, the shotgun, and then instead of having just one big hole, we got uh, all these little holes here, same amount of area. Supposed to have two and a half times more going out than coming in. So I got two holes there. That's two and way more than a half. So I got three times the amount going out. So maybe four times the amount. So that'll that'll cool really well. Yep, got a spot right there to miss. I'm telling you, these judges, <clears throat> the ones that I've appeared before, you know, not so much last year. It was done away from the 180 building. But when Jim Lynch and Charlie Reeves are judging, you better have your act together because them guys are tough. And Jim, if you're watching, I still love you. <laughs> Okay, that's good, good enough, that's good. Okay, where'd you go? I see me here just a second ago. There it is.
That'll all be good. Just now starting to warm up around here. Had the first day today, I didn't have to have a long sleeve shirt on. We got some of that global warming going on. Okay, we wanted to get a weight on this to see where we're at. This airplane is going to be two ounces heavier than it reads today, flying weight. So let's see what it's going to be. Of course, I don't know. We uh, I only added three quarters of an ounce for two coats of clear out uh, last Saturday. We might get by with less than two, but we'll go on the outside. Two ounces. We got to give you the uh, the look of the uh, scale here, so you know I'm not lying. Now, everything's on this airplane. I could fly it right now, except the ink lines aren't sealed, so it's got to be cleared. But everything's on it. The flaps are glued on, the wingtip weight's in it, the fuel line's in it, the um, fuel filter, the little plunger capper thing. It was set on ounces there. Fifty nine fifty. I don't know if you can see that or not. Fifty nine fifty. So it's under sixty ounces right now. It'll be a uh, sixty one and a half. Sixty one. We'll try to shoot for sixty one ounce and a half of clear on it instead of two. But on the outset, sixty one and a half. It ain't too bad. I wish I could get away with the uh, 58 ounces, but all this big block engine and the, this propeller weighs more than, than my 13.6 rev up. The engine's an ounce heavier. The muffler's an ounce heavier. I mean, plus you're carrying a bigger fuel tank and you know, everything's bigger, bigger, bigger. It's got to weigh more, so still pretty good, but it's, it's not Billy's 56 ounces or whatever the hell that airplane is. But I think he's got some magic wood in that airplane. You can't build light airplanes without light wood. I can tell you that right now. But the biggest killer is the paint. Everybody's looking for that magical 20 point finish with a shine that's three foot deep. And I shoot that urethane on there and I'll guarantee you that urethane, whatever you mix in that cup, whatever that cup of paint weighs, that's what it weighs when it hits the airplane because it doesn't gas off. All right. 
Guess I better eat dinner and go to sleep. It's almost 10 o'clock. Like, subscribe, make sure to ring that bell for notifications so you're notified when I come on or Charles comes on. And uh, I got to come on tomorrow night. And like I said, I made a stupid comment the other night, so I'll, I'll apologize tomorrow night. But uh, I'll see you Saturday at John's. Go in, keep sanding. See you.